Why are nations that see liberal democratic nations as their competitors or even enemies sending their children to these nations to be educated? And are their actions precursors to international relations and global events that may take place in the future? Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan. And I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey. And welcome to the show. I'm about to present some words that may upset those subscribed to specific social, philosophical, and political beliefs. You have to understand that the game plan applied by world leaders and their governments often expand beyond their influence and sometimes their control abroad. However, over the years, several governments have aggressively implemented and exploited methods that have allowed them to operate within specific sectors of nations that they have determined are their competitors and enemies in non-threatening ways. In the end, this permits them to maneuver in plain sight while at the same time remaining camouflaged. Now, several authoritarian governments have planned and implemented soft power practices to gain physical and fiscal powerful positions in institutions in liberal democratic nations that they view as threats to their country and regional acquisitions and roads to global dominance. Opponents of liberal democratic nations and their philosophies have carefully invested in long-term plans that allows them to obtain better understandings of liberal democratic nations while at the same time enabling them to subversively transmit their desires for incubating internal disruptions that could help them gain access to sensitive information related to government exchanges and planning. And one of the best ways to gain such internal insights into liberal democratic nations is to permit elements from within their own country and governments to be sent abroad to be educated in liberal democratic nations that they profoundly oppose. Now, why do you think leaders of nations that have publicly announced on several occasions that liberal democratic nations are their enemies, allowing their own children to go to these nations to be educated? Now, you have to understand when someone can communicate in and understand the intricate meanings of the words and terms used by the people of the nation they are being hosted in, they gain credible insights into the expectations, fears, preferences, prejudices, and even the idiosyncrasies of the people of that nation. Now, having unrestricted or at the very least limited access as an observer, students, scholars, or even long-term residents abroad are provided a more precise understanding of what unites the people of a particular nation and what, of course, tears them apart. This knowledge could be used to extend further or exacerbate the current negativity taking place within several democratic nations today. Now, China is a nation that has invested and allowed more of their human capital to be educated in liberal democratic nations over the past 50 years than any other nation in recent history. And as a result, China could effortlessly use their cultural relationships to sponge up and break down the core that holds a host nation together, quite easily in fact. The truth is China isn't the first nation to export its people abroad to study in other nations and learn their habits, practices, and internal workings. The truth is their underlings and children will likely turn out to be the future leaders of their nation and are currently learning how to comprehend and apply techniques that can be used for persuasive communication and manipulation of especially liberal democratic nations and republics that are in currently in disarray. Now, while democratic nations and their leaders were sleepwalking and entangling themselves deeply in their selfish local concerns, the enemies of democratic nations and governments have been actively and aggressively sending their underlings and children abroad to not only you know, be educated, but also build relations that are only based on financial incentives and not upon allegiance to any other nation or government. 
their experiences not only allowed their underlings and children to gain valuable formal educations, but also acquire deep understandings of the nuances that bring the people of especially democratic nations together, which may sound good to those who are trying to influence or change the minds of these underlings and often eager children. Now, it shouldn't be hard to understand and find out why elite universities and liberal democratic nations in the West are themselves invested in the future leaders of states that consider their nations competitors or even enemies. And the common denominator is money. Now, suppose something isn't done soon to place this in the spotlight and rally attention 10 years from now. In that case, it'll be too late to recover from the fact that democratic nations have allowed themselves to become accomplices in the taking away of their freedoms and way of life. Today, free and liberal democratic nations are actively training talented people from nations with governments that refer to them as political, philosophical, or even regional competitors. Foreign contemporaries educated in liberal democratic nations may one day turn out to be more than just competitors. They may become starch enemies of liberal democratic nations, which does more than just complicate the understandings among people of the world. Hey, hello, everybody. I want to interject at this point. I want to talk about an article I found under a a group called the China Leadership Monitor. This article I found on the um, Hoover Institute site. The title of the article is called Educational and Professional Backgrounds of Current Provincial Leaders. And this is talking about provincial leaders in China by someone named Chen I don't know if this person is a male or female, but what's so interesting about this article was the uh, two sections. One one section said most of them, talking about the provincial leaders, most of them studied in the West, especially in the United States. All of these recent changes in the profiles of China's provincial leadership will have profound implications for the country's social economic development in the years to come. It, it, it's just so powerful. And there's another section in this article. I'll leave it in a, in a link below. It says here, it says, under Deng Xiaoping's rule in the early 1980s, the Chinese Communist Party began to recruit new members from different social and occupational backgrounds into leadership positions, hoping to adapt to the changing environment by recruiting fresh talent and thereby obtaining new legitimacy. During the past decade, China has in fact been ruled by technocrats, who are mainly engineers turned politicians. Now, that's the key there. The three big bosses in the so-called third generation, you know, leadership, Zhang Zemin, Li Peng, and Zhu Rongji, and the three heavyweights, you know, in the fourth generation, President uh, Hu Jintao, Premier uh, Wen, Wen, Wen Jiabao, and Vice President uh, Zhang Qinghong, all, all, you know, are all engineers by training. Now, this is quite, quite interesting to me, because if I look at, say, a lot of the leadership, people in the leadership positions, government positions in Western nations, and especially the United States, most of them were not educated overseas. Most of them, now this honest, honestly, and most of them never had the opportunity to work in in nations or like like China or, or Japan or even Russia's how you say educational institutional system, where in Western nations a lot of people who are in very powerful leaderships positions in countries like China, um, uh, Japan. Or, or Russia, they've had the opportunity, especially as, as students, to be involved in programs run by the local government. So they were able to get a certain in-depth, uh, 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 comprehensive position of the culture they were studying in. So this brings the key to me. And it's quite unfortunate that how many officials in the Western world, especially from uh, uh, liberal democratic nations, are have a, a really close key or understanding of other nations and people of the world. A lot of them got wonderful degrees from these top-named tiered universities, but 
do they really have the ability to actually understand other cultures so they can interact with them? This is something that I think China has learned very well, and they really are quite aggressive. So this is uh, just something I'm going to pop in here before we continue. Now, I'm sure some of you may be thinking that I'm just fear-mongering or trying to heighten the level of distress. I just want you to take a moment to ask yourself, what guarantees when liberal democratic nations allow, for example, scholars, students, and long-term foreign residences into their nations from countries that taught them, in most cases since childhood, that liberal democratic nations are sworn enemies that must be surpassed, suppressed, or brought down to their knees? are only in these free and liberal democratic nations for an education? It's just something to think about. But the truth is, most of them are. Truth Truth time. time. Truth Truth time. time. Now, I hope that their reasons for studying abroad were to further educate themselves and promote world peace and understandings because these were my motivations for studying abroad. Now, educational institutions and foundations in liberal democratic nations appear to be more concerned with increasing their endowments than keeping their arrogance and ignorance under control. Now, frankly, I can't present to you any personal evidence that demonstrates what I just said is the final game plan for any nation. But you must admit that some scenarios do or have existed. I know some of the things I said peed some people off. But I'm just trying to keep it real and accurate to show people in liberal democratic nations who are too caught up in their internal quarrels what they need to expect in the future and why. Now, life in liberal democratic nations is far from perfect. And I admit that I may be wrong on many points, but I just want you to take a moment to think about why I may be right on many topics. Those of us living in or from liberal democratic nations must remember that democracy isn't something we should only want to take from. To exist in a liberal democracy, people must give up some of their beliefs that don't benefit their community and nation as a whole. I know this may be hard for some people to do in today's temperate social political environment. You see, I know my focus has mainly been on China. But China isn't the only nation that has been allowed to use its influence to enter liberal democratic countries they perceive as enemies, but also in countries that are willing to sell themselves to acquire financing for social services and infrastructure, which later turn out to be laced in corruption. Most of us are familiar with the term that history always repeats itself. And it's true. History does repeat itself in many ways. And I would like to stress how developments in the world today predict how much replication will take place in the future. Because over time, it becomes easy to see that a particular blueprint is being followed that supersedes military incursions and financial crises. And living here in Taiwan places this at the forefront for me. And the question today is, what should be or will be done from this point on? If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe to help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. Remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.